Hello everyone, welcome back to Switch Up. Today we have for you our look at some of the games that are coming out in this upcoming week for the Nintendo Switch. Apologies, this one's out a little bit later this week. It's been a very hectic one and it's just me this week, I'm afraid. Mark's got some family bits to deal with. So Mark, take as long as you need, mate, and we'll all be here when you get back. There's a lot of indie games coming out this week, as is the norm, to be fair. A couple that are quite highly anticipated and one retail release that I know a lot of people have been looking forward to. Okay, with all that said, let's get into it. The first game then we're going to highlight this week is a game called Another Sight. Now this describes itself as a surreal fantasy game set in Victorian England. The game focuses on two main characters being a teenager who has lost their sight and a cat, both of whom have their own unique talents and you must use each of these talents to traverse various environments. There's no trailer on the eShop for this one, just a few screenshots, which is always a little bit concerning. I know it released on various other platforms relatively recently as well. What I would say is this one is very expensive and it will really need to justify that high price point. The next game is a game called Citizens of Space. Now I played the first game of this series which was called Citizens of Earth on the 3DS a few years back and I remember when it came out there was quite a lot of hype about it because it was a turn based RPG but it was based in an urban setting and of course a lot of people made the connection between that and Earthbound which is a game that a lot of people hold very dearly and of course had that similar urban setting. I didn't mind the first game, it was okay, but it was very glitchy, it had a lot of bugs in it which was very unfortunate. So my major concerns with this one would be hoping that any bugs have been taken care of before release, but I also wonder how the new setting of space will affect the game, as it's lost obviously that urban setting that made the first one quite so popular. Shall find our beloved planet and set things right. But I'm going to need help from you, my galactic constituents. This is a job for Citizens of Space! Next game then, this is one that I know there are quite a few people interested in and it's my friend Pedro. Now this one sees you shooting anyone and everything in your path with a use of things such as slow-mo, bullet time, etc. But you also have a friendship, shall we say, with a banana. A bit like if John Wick was a greengrocer, I suppose. Mark's having a look at this one for review for us, so that review should be up fairly soon. The Child's Sight is the next game up, and this joins quite a few games actually on the Switch that follow the first person horror route. I know there are the obvious ones, such as Outlast and Layers of Fear, but there are quite a few cheaper ones on the Switch already as well. This seems to fall into that latter category, coming in at about £4.49, but also having 50% off if you own one of the publisher Forever Entertainment's other games. The trailer looks interesting for such a cheap price point, might be one that's worth having a go at. Okay, before we look at the next game, I just want you to do something for me first, please. I want you to put one of the following three options into the comments section below. After watching that previous trailer, did you A, jump at the jump scare, B, roll your eyes in derision at the jump scare, or C, had you skipped the trailer completely and now you're wondering what on earth I'm talking about and you're about to rewind it to see what the jump scare was. Okay, the next game is a game called Mainlining. Now, this game has been out a couple of years now on Windows, and it received fairly average reviews from what I can see. 
The basic premise is it's a point and click adventure game, but also a hacking simulator, seeing you as a newly recruited agent for M17. Didn't they get to number one with Stay Another Day a few years ago? Anyway, I haven't played this one, so I don't know what it's like, but I'll be honest, I quite like games like this, something a little bit different, a bit of a change of pace. We'll see how it holds up on the Switch. Catan is the next game that we're going to highlight this week. Now I know only two things about this game. A, I know it's based on a board game and B, I know it's very, very popular. I don't play board games very much anymore and never really have played these sort of ones anyway, but I know there's a couple on the Switch already and I know that people go mad for them. I can also see by looking on the eShop description that this one includes online play, which I know that one of the other games, I think it was at Carcassonne, was criticized for not including. So at least this one has that online element too. Next up then we have Slender The Arrival which is of course based on the infamous character of Slenderman. Now I've never played any of the Slenderman games, I did download one of them on the Wii U, I just never got around to playing it. Maybe I'll give that one a bash this Halloween. The only other thing I know about Slenderman is he looks a little bit like my old headmaster at school. Next up, and we have another point and click game, and this is Secret Files 2. Now this game is about 10 years old now, I think. And I also think I'm right in saying that the first one, Secret Files, is already available on the Switch. This joins a host of adventure games that have come to the Switch so far, such as the Siberia series and things such as Yesterday Origins as well. And this has the full game and is not episodic, so you get everything in one package. And at about £13.50, $15 I'm assuming, it's much better priced than some of the other alternatives as well. The next game is a game called Please Don't Touch Anything and this again I think was on iOS and other platforms probably about three years ago now. I haven't played it, I don't play mobile phone games so I'm not sure whether it's any good or not. Again, according to its Metacritic score it received, I don't know, I'd say average to good scores, about 75% rating. It looks as if the game challenges you to a set of puzzles with the fate of a city in your hand and it looks a little bit like another game that's on the Switch already called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Last but not least then we have what I would say is probably not a very controversial statement, the most anticipated game of the week, and that's Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Now I never played the original Crash Team Racing as I didn't have a PlayStation back then, I had the N64 and before that the Super Nintendo, but I know that it's a game that is very well regarded and a fair few people would tell you it was better than the Mario Kart series back at that time. Obviously we have a Mario Kart game on the Switch as well as the recently released Team Sonic Racing, so we now have three heavy hitters of the industry all with their own kart races on the Switch. Right, that's it for this week then. As I said, mostly indies, a couple of games that look fairly decent. One game that I know a lot of people will be excited for. Are you picking any of these up? Please do let us know in the comments section below. Which ones would you recommend if you've played them before? Again, stick it down below and let us know. A huge thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. We really do appreciate it. Take it easy and until next time, happy gaming. <laughs>